Hello and welcome to number two on how I arrange songs for Concertina, the series. Uh, this one's going to be a bit more loosey-goosey than before. It's been a bit of a busy week, uh, trying to get this done by Friday. Hopefully it's not too bad. So moving straight on into section one, we have software. Now the main thing here is I use MuseScore 3 and not MuseScore 4. If you go into the MuseScore website, the first thing it's going to offer you is MuseScore 4 because MuseScore 3 is now... Uh, obsolete, it's no longer supported. However, we'll get to it in the next section. There's a specific reason why we need MuseScore 3 for my method of arranging songs. When you go onto the MuseScore page, you'll be greeted uh, with this sort of view, or at least at the time of making the video, this is what the view looks like. Um, what you want to go down to is download an older version, because this is offering you MuseScore 4, in this case 0.2.1, which is not what we want. We want MuseScore 3. So when you click on that, you'll be brought onto this sort of screen. Uh, we want to go to older versions, because again, this is still trying to give you MuseScore 4.2.1. We want to get MuseScore 3. Uh, it'll bring you down here, uh, which we have three sort of sections to pick here. Uh, depending on your operating system, I'm Windows, so I pick Windows 7 or higher, which brings you to a very dodgy looking site, but it seems to be legit. Um, and at the bottom here, we have the latest versions of MuseScore. Uh, there's three here. One is x86, one is 64-bit, um, and the other is PATH, which I'm not sure, but it seems to be the best one to go for because it's an EXE. Uh, however, I'm going for the MSI here. I'm not sure what the PATH is. You know, use it at your own risk. Once we've got MuseScore 3 installed, the next thing we're going to need is the AngloTab plugin. Now, the AngloTab plugin was made by uh, another Constantina player here on YouTube uh, called Steve Schultes. I hope I pronounced that right, Steve. I originally didn't realize it was his. Um, I began listening to his videos before I realized he made the plugin. Uh, it was only after when later down the line, when looking at the GitHub repo and seeing Schult, somehow my brain matched the two together. I asked him, and it is indeed the same man. You can find him on YouTube, uh, this sort of link here. Um, my favorite video by his is the Cop Town song. He's also uploaded the music to that, it's in the description. Worth checking out if you're interested. Future Martin here. A quick interjection, uh, Steve actually contacted me on Constantina.net saying he's been looking at different methods and approaches to getting Gary Coover tablature working uh, a nice workflow for it in MuseScore 4. So some of the stuff coming up might not be needed in the future. Uh, I think Steve said he might make a video at some point about it, so keep an eye on his channel um, in case something like that comes up. Uh, if you follow the link on screen here, it will take you to the AngloTab page on GitHub. Um, upon which there's not too much to do here, you want to click on the code button and you're going to want to click download zip. Once you've downloaded the zip file, you want to extract it and you want to put the contents inside the MuseScore 3 plugins folder. So that'll be wherever you've installed MuseScore 3, find the plugins folder and basically copy paste the entire folder into the plugins folder. So once that's plugins put into the folder, you can open up MuseScore 3. Uh, you should be greeted with a screen like this, so I've got some existing stuff there and get rid of that. Um, now, the next thing you want to do is actually hook the plugin into MuseScore 3. So if you click on plugins at the top here, um, mine says Anglo Tab, yours won't at this stage, I don't believe. You want to go plugin manager. Uh, you probably want to reload plugins, probably worth giving it a reload. Um, and then what you want to do is tick on Anglo Tab in your plugin manager on the left here. It should hopefully appear by now, so you want to give that a tick. Uh, this plugin provides an interface for creating tablature for a 30 button Anglo Constina. That's what we want. Click OK. And now you should have Anglo tab at the bottom here. Um, what you want to do is you want to give that a click, and it looks like nothing happens. Nothing at all. Give it another click. Still nothing. Um, I got confused the first time I did this. I thought the plugin wasn't compatible with the version of MuseScore or I'd done something wrong. But no, it actually opens up the Anglo tab at the very bottom here. Um, opened up two, so I've clicked on it twice. I've tried this on three different PCs, and every single time it always opens up at the bottom. Why? I don't know. But what you want to do is want to give that a drag. I usually, um, yeah, just sort of drop it in here. So now you can go between Angular Tab and Inspector. And you should see a nice layout here, which looks exactly like you have on your Angular Concertina. So now we're getting somewhere. Um, as an example of basically doing some quick Angular Tab here, let's quickly turn this into... Uh, some crotchets. We're going to go C, D, E, F. Nice. Press escape to get rid of this note. Now, there's no nothing on this will automatically put the 
things above the notes, put your tablature above or below the note. Uh, everything has to be done manually, uh, which is fine because sometimes again you want multiple tabs above or below notes like I often do to show harmony without actually adding the harmony notes onto the stave. So on this you can go C, for instance this is the right hand so if you have that as a C, uh, if you want this as a D we can go here. In order to show a pull, if you just click pull it will add a basic little line above it. Uh, we want E here so E, we go an F on the pull, et voila, and we've done a very basic do do do. I wonder if I can get my concertina. Yeah, let's get the concertina quickly. Hang on. I don't know if this microphone's going to blow this out. Nice. We've got some very basic um, tablature going on, and that's pretty much us good to go at this stage. So we have MuseScore 3 installed, we have the plugin installed, we're good to go on that end. Uh, the next bit of this is, well, okay, that's great and all, but I have a song I want to arrange, and I have no idea how to even start arranging that song. So that's where this comes in, which is the resources I use to help me arrange specific songs. So the first section we have here is sheet music. Uh, we have three websites, which I often go to, uh, to find resources to help me arrange my songs. Um, they're each good for their own little niches. Uh, BG Lead Sheets is good for video game music. The Session, good for traditional. Uh, MuseScore is more of just general pop culture or anything else where I can't find on the other sites. Uh, MuseScore is the same, they're the same people that did the uh, program we just installed, put the plugin on. They named the website the same thing as their program. Um, the website is an actual music sort of uploading and browsing site where I put my music. A uh, bit confusing to have them both named the same thing, but sure. So let's start with something like uh, BG Lead Sheets. So let's say we want to do a video game. Um, Let's say we want to do a Zelda song. Uh, I actually didn't plan this. Tell you what, let's just do the Wind Waker theme here. Uh, the title theme. When you click on one of these, uh, you would greet with a nice bit of music. Um, the thing with this is... I see, no, this is, an, this is an awful key. <laughs> oh god, it gets worse. Like I said, we're going to do Lon Lon Ranch. Because this one doesn't seem too difficult. It's do 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 um, This is a lead sheet. A lead sheet is basically um, your melody and then the chords. It's very handy for things like the concertina, where basically that's what you want. Um, it's going to be very difficult to try and get the original instruments working correctly. As mentioned in the first one, uh, my first arranging video about bellows directions, limitations. So a basic layout of how the song should sound and the chords we're using is exactly what we need. So let's start with Lon Lon Ranch. Just as a quick one here as well, this is what the session looks like. So you can look for um, tunes, let's say we want the butterfly. A nice traditional Irish one. Uh, the butterfly slip jig, I think. So this is a good way to find your traditional um, sheet music as well. There's loads of stuff on the session, it's very, very handy. So we have MuseScore open, we have Anglo tab open, we have our sheet music selected. I'll probably put it down here at the bottom somewhere, I think. What do we do now? Well, the first thing to do is try and match the time signature and the key of the song. So if we have a look here, we have, um, it seems to be in the key of D, we've got two sharps. So we'll drag along the key signature there. Uh, our time signature now, we're in three, four time. So it's do, 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 two. One, two, three, one, two, three. So we're going to need two of these bad boys. Dotted one here. And let's do a space bar to make that one bar. Okay, so let's start with this. Let's try and get this working first. We've got... Press space to stop it again. Uh, it seems to be a little bit quick for me. So we're going to go to tempo. We're going to, we're going to click on here. We're going to. How do we get it working again? Yeah, we go. Just clicking once. Again, speed is doesn't really matter as such in this case. We're going to make this invisible just because I don't like it uh, appearing on the thing here. So if you jump over to the Anglo tab, um, we've got D B A. Um, now again, like how would you go about deciding which buttons to press? Uh, some of this will just come with practice and time. Uh, with me, because uh, looking at the lead sheet as well, we've got the chord of D here. It would make more sense to go D on the pull there, B on the pull here, and A on the 
uh, and then for the last one, a on the pole. So do 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 do. And do the same here. Uh, we might need to change it again. This is just a very basic layout. This will probably change as we go on. If we start running out of air, we might need to suddenly start pushing. So it might be, again, we could also do this as an example, D on the push there, um, and then B on the push here. And then let's say we go A on the push here as well. I mean, that's also just as just as viable. They're all the same, like I said, because we've got multiple multiple copies of the same notes here, both those are fine. So I'm going to cut that short just quickly here, just because I was going on in a bit of a ramble. Um, there's more stuff I wanted to discuss. I'll go more into arranging stuff in a later video. What I want to discuss just now is some of the other tools I use. Um, one of them is a reverse chord finder. Uh, I've got a link to it here. This is an application where you can put in notes that you can see on uh, bass clef, and it will, or, or any old uh, clef to be honest, and it will tell you what chord uh, those notes belong to. It's very, very handy, especially if you don't have a lead sheet and you're trying to instead figure out um, the chords as the song goes along. This is what the reverse chord finder looks like. It is a basic piano. Uh, you press the notes on the piano and it'll tell you the chord it belongs to. So C, you drop down the middle, it has to be C minor, for instance. Um, I find this particularly handy because sometimes my memory is not great for chords. Um, I'll often, and especially when you're looking at lead sheets, I'll often see a note like, this chord is G flat. And, be, oh, and I don't know off the top of my head what notes are in G flat. I find this particularly handy just to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and voila, I now have the notes in G flat. Um, in terms of going 4 and 3, um, again, I can go 3 and 4 instead, and that's the minor. This is obviously, there's probably a lot of people who are potentially bigger into music than me that are you know, throwing up in their mouth a bit of what I'm doing here, but this is my basic understanding of, of chords, which is you can, for instance, G, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and voila, we now have the G. If instead we go 3 and then 4, so we go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, we now have the minor. Um, again, if this is <laughs> if this is upsetting you, I'm very sorry. If this also seems like something like, how how do you know that? Again, I would highly recommend the Music Matters videos on chords and things. Uh, you can then add a 7th to it by going 1, 2, 3, etc. We now have a G minor 7th. It's very handy, like, if I suddenly see a D flat 7th, or a D flat minor 7th, for instance. I can just go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, F flat. We have a D flat minor 7th. And now I know, just by looking at the lead sheet, I know I need a D flat minor 7th, and now I know all the notes that I can play with that D flat minor 7th. I can have this open on one screen, and I can have my view score page open on another screen. Very, very handy for me. The other way this is useful is if you're looking at uh, sheet music, for instance, this is Into the Unknown from Over the Garden Wall on MuseScore. And we have a chord here, and I don't know what chord that is. Um, we are in the key of E, I believe, with the four sharps. So what we have a C, we've got an E, and we've got a G. Now in this one, C is sharp, uh, F is sharp, and G is sharp, and D is sharp, and no E. So, what this means, we can jump over here, we can go, let's turn this to sharps instead, we go C sharp, E and G sharp, that chord there is a C sharp minor. So that's where this sort of thing can be handy as well, where you're looking at a chord, you're not sure what it is, you can plop into here, C sharp minor, you can then also add that um, as annotation to your sheet music. The other way this is handy is for transposing keys. Uh, we just saw over the garden wall there was in the key of E, and it was a C sharp minor. Uh, what this means is if, or when I was transposing it to the key of um, D minor and then to D, I know that that C sharp minor is instead a D minor in the key of D minor, which is, you know, perfect. I now know exactly what chord I need. <laughs> so, just going through that again, we look at this thing here, we know what chord is that, we then jump over here, we can figure out, okay, it's C sharp minor, and then at the circle of fifths, we can go, okay, if I'm transposing to the key of D minor, this is the chord I need. Again, if this circle of fifths thing seems bizarre to you as well, I, again, highly recommend Music Matters. Those videos are very, very handy for um, explaining a lot of this stuff. So that is how a tool like this uh, can be extremely handy for arranging music and just being part of your general flow. Now the last tool in the arsenal I want to cover is Chord AI. Uh, this is an application I use sometimes in conjunction um, with arranging other songs, all I've got is a melody. The main use of it I have is if I cannot find any chords, any lead sheet, any music whatsoever, 
Uh, an example of this would be my recent recording of Dear Old Stan, of which I could find no sheet music at all, and so I had to basically start from scratch. And what I started with was Chord AI. This is what the application looks like. Um, you can search by microphone, browsing sound files on your, er, on your phone. Uh, I mainly use it for browsing YouTube, so you click on the YouTube thing, you agree with the horrible YouTube start thing. Uh, so for example, you would type in Lon Lon Ranch, uh, the screen recorder struggle to the search button. Uh, click on any video you know which has the music to it in, so for instance one here. Let Chord AI do its thing, it might take a little while to analyse the recording. Uh, once it's done, you'll be greeted with uh, this. It should tell you the key on the left here. Um, it should tell you the beats per minute, uh, and it'll tell you the chords as the song goes along. Um, and again, we can compare this to the lead sheet we just had there, and see that in fact it's actually very, very close. You can got again C sharp augmented is the same as D flat augmented. Um, do not take this application as gospel. It is very, very good but it is not perfect. Do not trust it 100%. All in all, a very, very handy tool um, which I often go back to. Thank you for listening this long, if you are still listening. Um, this was a bit of a long one, but it took a while basically to just go through all the tools I use there and how I use them. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Later videos from here will start going through uh, song by song, and I'll break down how I arrange them, basically. Thank you very much for your support in terms of subscribing, if you have. Um, just a weekend or so ago, we hit 1,000 subscribers, uh, which I'm very, very happy about. Uh, it's been a bit of a busy week, so again, sorry about the kind of slapdash nature of this video. Um, it has been a lot of stuff going on midweek. I've got a birthday at the weekend coming, so yeah, a bit hectic. Um, but thank you for your time listening, and thank you for your support, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.